Welcome to today's session. In today's session, we have planned a very pertinent topic in neonatology that is neonatal hypothermia. At the end of this session, you will be able to understand what is the temperature regulation in neonates, understand the clinical features and management of neonatal hypothermia. How have I outlined the session? We will begin with the clinical case scenario, proceed to the introduction and the thermal regulation in newborns, then the etiopathogenesis, clinical features, investigations and management of neonatal hypothermia. Then I will conclude with my summary and take home message and the test time. So let's begin with the clinical case scenario. A 37 week old neonate was delivered to a mother by normal delivery. Her birth weight was 2.5 kgs and APGAR scores were 9 upon 10. As the mother developed postpartum hemorrhage, the mother and baby diet were shifted to a tertiary center which was 6 hours away. When the baby reached the tertiary center, the duty resident noted the following findings. Upon vitals, heart rate was 180 per minute, respiratory at 30 per minute, temperature 33.5 degrees Celsius, blood pressure 60 by 30 millimeters of mercury. General examination, the child had cold body, body as well as cold peripheries, poorly active with a poor cry. System examination was normal. Now, when we analyze this case, what are the findings that we have to keep in mind? Important is that, first, this child essentially was normal. She was born by normal delivery, her birth weight is normal, APGAR scores are normal. They were shifted in view of the maternal indication to a tertiary center 6 hours away. Now, in the meantime, when the child reached the tertiary center, there is significant elevation in heart rate because heart rate up to 160 is normal in newborns. Above 200 is considered as pathological tachycardia. But heart rate above 180 should raise a warning sign towards increased heart rate. Respiratory rate is strangely low. You find normal respiratory rate between 40 and 50 in a newborn who is just delivered. Here the respiratory rate is 30 per minute. Something very slow and shallow is happening in the respiratory rate. Temperature, the child is cold with a body temperature of 33.5 degrees Celsius. Blood pressure is on the lower limit of normal. And child's peripheries are cold, body is cold. She is poorly active with a poor cry. So what is the diagnosis with all this? We have a term neonate who has had a normal transition from intrauterine to extrauterine life. Her APGAR scores also have been normal. But during transport, what has happened? She has developed abnormal vitals, cold body and cold peripheries during the 6 hours of transport. So what will our clinical diagnosis be? Our clinical diagnosis will be neonatal hypothermia which has developed during transport. That is the clinical diagnosis. But whenever we consider a diagnosis of neonatal hypothermia, we can never rule out sepsis. So sepsis should always be kept in mind whenever we receive a baby who is cold peripheries, cold body and poorly active. It is always a primary differential diagnosis. So with this introduction, let us see what is the temperature regulation in the newborn baby. In neonatal hypothermia, what is very important to know is the neutral thermal environment. The neutral thermal environment is a range of environmental temperatures in which an infant can maintain normal body temperature with minimal basal metabolic rate and oxygen consumption. Meaning, there are environmental temperatures like very cold temperatures wherein the baby has to generate great amount of heat by increasing his or her basal metabolic rate and increasing his or her oxygen consumption in order to keep the body temperature normal. That is not neutral thermal environment. Where the baby can maintain his or her body temperature with minimal effort with respect to BMR and oxygen consumption, that range is called the neutral thermal environment. So, what is the definition of neonatal hypothermia? Inability of the newborn to adapt to the lower temperature of the surroundings resulting in a fall in body temperature to abnormally low levels is called neonatal hypothermia. Now, this definition is important and in the new competency curriculum, neonatal hypothermia comes in a must know competency. So, the definition is important. Coming to the physiology of temperature regulation in the newborn. In fetal life, temperature regulation is done by the maternal body and the maternal blood supply and there is no energy expended upon this by the fetus per se. Once the delivery is conducted, 
the newborn now moves from the intrauterine environment to the extrauterine environment. And this extrauterine environment is definitely at a lower temperature than compared to the intrauterine environment. Hence, the newborn now has to start functioning to maintain his or her own body temperature. Neonates do not have significant muscle mass. Hence, when they feel cold, they cannot shiver and with rigors and active muscle contraction produce heat and hence increase their body temperatures. So, what is the thermal regulation in the newborn? Temperature regulation hence has to be done through non-shivering mechanisms. This is what is the non-shivering thermogenesis which is very clearly described with respect to newborns. If you look at the intrauterine and extrauterine environment, it is very similar or akin to a child come playing in the swimming pool and coming outside. A child who plays in a warm swimming pool and comes outside, the temperature inside the pool is something like 30 degrees Celsius and the child comes out and walks into the AC of the 5 star hotel where the temperature is 18 degrees. Now that difference in temperature the child's body will maintain by just a slight shiver. That shivering is caused by muscle contraction. So when we have muscle contraction that produces heat and the child becomes warm again even in the 18 degrees lobby of the 5 star hotel. Whereas in the newborn, because they do not have muscle mass, they do not have a mechanisms to shiver and produce heat. Hence, this mechanism called the non-shivering thermogenesis. Newborns also come from an intrauterine liquor environment where the temperature is 37 degrees to an extrauterine environment where the temperature can be somewhere between 22 to 28 degrees, which is what most labor theaters are maintained at. So hence, the non-shivering thermogenesis mechanism is what comes into play there in newborns. The non-shivering thermogenesis is described with respect to brown fat. Brown fat is the type of fat found around the shoulders, upper part of the back and on the arms in neonates. And it is here that there is the non-shivering thermogenesis which helps the neonates maintain their body temperature. In the event of the neonate feeling cold, like in cold stress, the neonate produces catecholamines like noradrenaline. This acts upon this brown fat, causing lipolysis as well as oxidation of this brown fat. In the event of oxidation and lipolysis of this brown fat, there is production of free fatty acids. These free fatty acids help to produce heat during their metabolism and this is through the generation of thermogenin. And this helps to increase the body temperature of the newborn and keeps to maintain it at normal. The vernix caseosa, which is a thick waxy greasy material covering the newborn at the time of delivery helps in reducing the evaporation, reducing the radiation of heat from the newborn skin and helps to maintain the heat genera generated through this non-shivering thermogenesis. So, this is the mechanism of temperature regulation in the newborn using brown fat or the non-shivering thermogenesis. Now, in this picture, what do you see? This is a newborn who is just delivered. I will show you the points which all you should notice. See this? Here you can see the completely wet hair and head and the head is the largest part of the body in the newborn. So this is what contributes to rapid evaporation and cooling. Because it is wet, the wet hair retains the water and that is being the largest surface area available in the newborn, there is rapid evaporation and cooling of the head. Can you see these areas? These are all these whitish, pale, creamish, waxy areas. These are the vernix caseosa. Now, here you can see these wrinkles and folds. These are the areas where you have brown fat. So, this is a newborn who is just delivered and this is what is happening inside the body of this newborn to maintain the body temperature at 37 degrees Celsius. Now, there are four main mechanisms how a newborn loses heat. First is evaporation from the skin, conduction into the bed clothes or into the environment where the newborn is in contact with the solid surface, convection through the draughts of air and radiation from the body to the air. 
let me pictographically show it to you. Now, this is a newborn who is in a warmer. Now, what are the things that is happening if the warmer was not on? The newborn is now in contact with this bed surface. Now, that is the heat lost through conduction. Where wherever the newborn lies down, that part of the baby warmer and the baby cloth will become nice and warm. That is where the newborn's body heat gets lost to the temp to the area just below in contact with the newborn's body. That is conduction. Now you will have draughts of air which move across the baby, especially if you have an air condition here. So these draughts of air will move the air over the surface of the newborn and take away the heat just in contact with the newborn. So these are the convection losses of air. The newborn's body itself will heat the air just surrounding the baby. So that are, those are the heat losses due to radiation. And ultimately I showed you the wet head of the newborn and you will have the wet body of the baby and this is how heat is lost by evaporation through the skin especially when you have a very thin and underdeveloped stratum corneum. Now this is very important to know how the heat loss occurs in the newborn. One this is asked as exam questions. Two when you know all these findings these are the areas at which we ought to act so that there is no further heat loss and we can minimize heat loss in a newborn. Now why are newborns prone to hypothermia? We have learnt about temperature regulation. We have learnt how newborns lose heat. Now why are they prone to hypothermia? Newborns have a larger body surface area per body weight when that is exposed to ambient air. Especially when the head is the one of the largest portions of the body and that is what is covered with hair which is wet and retains water. This larger surface of area Larger surface area is what is exposed when it is wet to the air and it is here is where there is a maximum amount of heat loss and cooling.